almost September. It's almost September. Man, can you believe it's almost freaking September? Holy hyperspace kraken. Where has August gone? I don't know about you, but thankfully, August was a little bit of a lull for me in terms of backing stuff. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, we'll see. Uh, a lot of pledge managers. Pledge managers, pledge managers, pledge managers. But September... The end of September, as well as the beginning of October, like the first two weeks in October, this next six weeks, though, is going to be a roller coaster in terms of there is a lot of stuff out there for everybody, a little bit of niche stuff all across the board that everyone is going to be tempted by. So it's definitely from a crowdfunding side of things. I don't really know what the retail side of things looks like over the next couple months. I think obviously like FFG's big stuff is like the end of the year. And there's not a whole lot elsewise known except for Essen, obviously, is going to have some releases. And that's about it. So a lot of it is going to be the focus on crowdfunding. So that's why we talk about it, right? So let's talk about the very tail end of August. Let's talk about a few things that are leaking into September. And then over the weekend, I think I'm going to try maybe on tomorrow even having out the games to watch out in September. And then, obviously, at the end of September, because September is the ninth month of the year, then that is post-September is quarter numero four, which means whole nother video talking about the things you need to watch for quarter four. So that's another huge video, but that's about a month away still. So let's actually, let's focus, rein myself in here, my ramblings. Let's talk about the stuff that is coming out this coming week that you should have your eye on. And there are a few things of note. If you missed it, each week I'm also doing a little shout out to my Patreon here. Uh, the people have been slowly um, trickling in there, so a lot of shout out to you guys. I'm putting out weekly videos right now uh, for my locks or my really focused analysis on a few of the bigger name projects. Uh, also, uh, from yesterday's video, if you missed the roundup from this past week, what do you want to see? What do you want to see? Do you want to see more reviews? Do you want to see more should you backs? Do you want to see more topical videos? Um, I've got a secret topic video that I'm going to do. And I've also got another new brainstorm idea. It's going to be, I'll do a separate little blurb video on this later, in case all of you that don't watch this want to check it out. Ask Liege. Ask me questions. Shoot me questions in the email. Shoot me questions in the comments. Mark them somehow like hashtag ask Liege. I don't know. I'm just making this up. I'm horrible at that stuff. But doing that and then doing a show like that. Okay, like ask me a question about board games. Ask me a question about this. Ask me for a game recommendation. You know, I like this, this, and this. I like these aspects. What would you recommend? Would you be interested in something like that? I thought it was something that people really don't do. I mean, people do a lot of the live stream side of things. Like, okay, I'm going to live stream and, and chat and answer questions that are on the stream. Well, I can't really do streams right now with the way my schedule is. But I thought this would be a nice alternative. If that's something of interest. I mean, crazy stuff. It doesn't have to be like routine. Like, would you? Like, what do you think of this crazy thing? Like, ask me something funny. I I would love to just be completely off the wall on these things too. So something that would be entertaining, I guess. Something that would be entertaining. Ask something that you would like to see me hilariously respond to or do or something. I don't know. I'm not doing boxes on my heads though. If you ask for that, you might get shot down. But something else crazy? Eh, who knows? Let's do it. I, surprise me. All 3,500. Speaking of that, we, we broke the 3.5k mark. We are 1.5K away for the mark of 5,000 by the end of 2021, which is which would be freaking fantastic. We are about two weeks away from my year anniversary, and so I've got a very special video planned for that. It's based off of one of my favorite cold opens of a show of all time. I'll just leave you with that. And it's going to be something I'm going to post on the year anniversary there. So it's going to be creative. I'm still working on it. I'm only about halfway. And this is this is the other rare thing, right? I'm going to give you a little insider back if you're paying attention. It's a little bit scripted. I'm putting that much extra effort into it, folks. So you'll want to tune in for this one. Uh, I don't know. That's it. 
I rambled way longer than I thought at the beginning of this, almost like five minutes worth just beginning at the beginning. So hopefully that wasn't off-putting. If it was, I'll make sure that this is the timestamp that you can just click to if you want to avoid that. But hopefully that's interesting too. Um, let's do this. What's coming out this next week? Choo-choo! Age of Trains. Two to five players. This game is going to be launching on August 30. Now, this was originally supposed to launch a week or two ago, and they literally like changed the date at the last minute because they wanted to get more backer potential backer, more playtester feedback. Now, this is essentially a pick up and deliver game that you're going to be doing through these real towns, but with various board management. Now, they call it a retro futuristic train game. And it looks to be very interesting. The board setup is different. There's going to be a couple different boards. There's four different ways of upgrading your trains in terms of how you're going to be able to better deliver and pick up things in the first place. Now, it appears, at least based on the description, there is going to be a high amount of interaction. And there are also going to be special action cards, which I'm assuming some of these are up here, that say... <laughs> in the description that you're going to be able to break the rules of the game. So give you some way to adapt and you're going to have to pay attention to what other people are doing in the first place because it may significantly affect your abilities or your ability to do whatever you want to do in the first place. Don't know much else about it besides that. It's launching on the 30th. It is definitely a different take on the train side of things. And we have seen a lot of train things in the past. Is this going to be as much of a hit as we see with the other type of train games? I have no idea. I am not a train game person. I have gotten rid of most of my train games except for the first journey, the kids ticket to ride Europe version, which my kids still enjoy at this age. And, you know, we'll see. Uh, I have no idea. We'll kind of see. This is a wild ball. I think this could be like 5,000. This could be like 20 or 30,000 for me. I have no idea anywhere in between. It'll be interesting to see what the funding point is and the price point, so we'll check it out when it launches on the 30th. Next up, we have Mythic Mischief from IV Games. This is the one that's sort of been making a lot of rounds in terms of the uh, video producing uh, content people. And a lot of them, all of the big names, I think the Dice Tower, uh, Board Game Co., I think as well as before you play i think they all like got invited down to iv games and like i think it was like tennessee or something and they posted on social media these pictures oh jeremy howard was there i i think jeremy weren't you there anyway <laughs> uh and they they did a whole bunch of uh, videos together it looked like or even separately or both and then also i've seen on social media that they have been like sending out like swag to a bunch of people like mythic mischief and ivy games like hats sweatshirts tote bags so i've seen a bunch of that floating around as like incentive hype i don't like wear our merch it's cool it's cool looking merchandise so um ivy games if you want to hook me up to any <laughs> anyway um either way this is going to be another very very interesting game i have my eye on this one it's launching on the 31st this is a very unique game because you are students in a library and you are trying to avoid the gaze and the attention of the librarian you are the first trying to score 10 points or when the tomb keeper reaches the end and returns all of the tombs the librarian uh then the game ends as well and you have abilities that you're going to be upgrading and using to manipulate her path to change the bookshelves in terms of where they are to change her path and just various uh, abilities asymmetrically depending on your faction in order to do so. Expect to see a lot of hype around this one when it launches just based on what I said. I mean, there's going to be a lot of content. So this is, again, this is a complete wild ball for me. I could see this being, you know, very niche because it seems more family-esque, but it also gives me the vibe of something like Flamecraft where... I wouldn't have expected Flamecraft to be anywhere in the high sixes, let alone breaking over a million dollars. So with this, I think it ha IV Games has a very good pedigree. And so I don't think that's the question with their previous games um, like Moonrakers and that sort of thing. Th you're getting a solid game. I don't think there's any question about that. It's just whether or not this appeals, how much plastic is there, what is the price point. 
And I mean, obviously I'm intrigued already. I love the concept. The only other game that I have is sort of like a library and sort of this ish theme is like the Stygian society where, and that's again, it's a completely, but that's sort of what it reminds me of in a theme that is outside of the normal trope with this type of game. And I'm excited to see this is, you know, easily my pick of the week of things that you need to keep your eye on and the one I'm most excited about. So check it out when it launches on the 31st. Next up also launching on the 31st is Old Salt. Now this is a very interesting concept. This is a premise of a quote unquote gateway naval strategy game where you are drafting your Navy with no reinforcements in sight. Sail around the map, loose your cannons, find islands, conquer islands, get treasure, last one standing or first one to control a certain number of islands is the winner now again obviously there's some player elimination but as a two to four player naval faring war ish game with a limited number of actions and the ability to have different factions and asymmetry depending on how heavy you want to play this game uh, it looks really intriguing as someone who is not interested in this theme at all whatsoever normally so it'll be really interesting, again, to see how this actually looks when it gets to the campaign page. You can see already right here by this picture that you have sort of a hex-based grid movement and you've got more standees, which I hope they stick with, honestly. I think that looks very clean in that sense. You can tell what's going on. I mean, obviously, with the little markers below them and the colors, you can tell which is which. And so it's a little bit intriguing to see what it's going to look like. And are they going to go the deluxe upgrade route or are they going to stick with the standees? And again, how does that affect price point? Because with all of these good games out and the concern about the shipping in the background, all of these games are not going to be able to be backed. They just aren't. So you're going to have to start to pick and choose. And if this price point is lower on something like this, it may intrigue more people like me who might be on the fence in the first place. Either way, it's launching on the 31st. Check it out. Next up, we have Three Tail. Now, this is a very interesting concept and a very interesting game. This is, and hear me out on this, this is probably going to be the most divisive part, a three-player game. Not one, not two, three-player game. And again, this is very interesting. This is a three-player cooperative game with storybook heroes of some form. Now, whether they're the ones you're familiar with or just ones in general, I'm not clear 100%, but it's a very interesting concept that you're going to be using and taking different actions through the four different phases of the game. Prophecy phase, then past, present, and future. Again, a very interesting concept. In the first phase, the prophecy phase, you get three hints to help you draft your heroes. Then in the second phase, phase, the past, this is where you are upgrading, you are traveling, you are doing the main gist of things. And in the present, this is when those things that were foretold come true and you deal with the ramifications and the uh, mitigation that you have tried to achieve uh, thus forth, I believe. And then the future, and the future says that there is going to be a backstory and again, choices of what you want to do and how you want your tale to be told essentially what are your objectives and what is your wing condition going to be now there's one review on board game geek right now but there are a bunch of images so you can take a look at what this is actually going to look like obviously it looks like we've got some sort of boxing three set here you can see three different boxes or expansions even going along from that side of things and I mean, it's miniatures, it's plastic. So again, we're talking about price point. This could be a pricier one. You can also take a look at some of these individual hero sheets. We'll blow it up here a second. And although it's really hard to tell because it's a little bit grainy, you can see these cubes along the side that you're going to be upgrading, along the bottom and along the other side. And it looks like you have equipment on this far side as well. And then something else like maybe allies or something on this side. So Again, a lot of stuff going on there. This is the one I've seen the biggest marketing for. I see Facebook ads for this one all the time. And I've been seeing them probably for at least the last like month, month and a half, I'd guess. And I don't really know as much about this one. There's not as much detail. Uh, I have not watched the one review or looked at the one review that's on Board Game Geek. I probably will uh, around the time of the campaign. But again, this one is another sleeper one I can easily see being in the low six figures, depending on how it actually looks and how much we know about it uh, when the campaign page goes live this is three tail check it out pick number two of the week august 31 there you go next up we have this game called minotaur catacombs now they say 
Uh, it's not in Board Game Geek, but the fast action board game. You control Minotaur and a hero, capture other heroes while your own hero escapes. $33,000 funding goal. You're choosing one of your stereotypical classes uh, to battle through these uh, catacombs of undead surprises and traps. So this page, I'll be honest with you, I'm looking at it and I'm going, it needs more. It needs more right now. You can see, I like the price points, $59, $65, there you go. But, okay, what are we actually doing? Okay, it looks very straightforward, more like a hero quest vibe. And there's one basic video on how you're going to be actually playing. It looks like you're using dice to roll. It's pretty heavily. And then they've got some renders here of that, as well as some pre-painted ones. That's about it. And they say this is going to be all produced in um, the U.S., I believe. Yep, 100% manufactured in the U.S. And so it's really going to be interesting. I, I, It just needs more. It needs more polish. It needs more information. It needs a rule book. Um, it just needs everything else. So I hope it has more when it launches. But I'll put the link below and you can check it out for yourself. Also launching on, like it says right here, September 1st. Next up, relaunching on the first, we have Green Hell, the board game. Now, I talked about this as sort of the game that gave me the Robinson Crusoe meets uh, Dungeon Crawler with the jungle being this uh, AI sort of mechanic that is you, what you are going up against as you are a crew searching for this uh, lost person in the jungle using your asymmetric abilities in order to survive, not like slug things out and kill a bunch of stuff but you know how are you going to just even survive in the first place a la the deserted survivor robinson crusoe esque hence the comparison and it had a funding goal of ninety thousand dollars when it launched uh back at the tail end of july i believe and it ended up canceling when it was about two-thirds of the way because they didn't think they were going to hit their funding goal and now it is relaunching on the first now, on the last update from August 25, they actually have a link to the new page, and you can see that the funding goal already is almost where they met at the end of the last campaign. So instead of 90,000, it's 64,000. Cheaper price is already what they're putting right up top. Apart from that, what is the difference and how much cheaper is it? Let's see, first time survivor's pack, uh, 276. What is that actually? I don't have a clue. Okay, so I guess it's not gonna show me uh, the conversion since it's canceled so we'll just have to guess at that but yeah it's cheaper uh standees that's why it's cheaper by almost 100 uh polish currency <laughs> uh anyway so what it, what else are you going to get what else has been changed um this is a draft page this is a huge page again they have plenty of videos this one just sort of fell through the cracks i think with all of the other big crawlers and big name stuff going on it's unique enough, but it also, you know, it doesn't have necessarily the weight that some of the other video game IPs that have ported onto the tabletop scene have held. And I didn't see it get as much hype either as plenty of the others. So honestly, I have no idea what to expect with this one. But with games like this in the last six months, we have seen that if they make some of these changes and they relaunch in a relatively decent time afterwards, that most of them are really actually funding. So... I guess I would be really surprised if this didn't fund, especially with the changes. Now, again, I guess I would really market, again, the changes. I would slam those up at the top apart from just the price. Like, hey, guys, boom, this is what we're doing. And so that's a little bit of that right there. So I like it. But I would slam it. I would put it all at the top. I'd lay out what all of these are, not just list them. I'd be explicit. That's how you're going to get people more interested at an earlier stage. Because especially on the crowdfunding side of things, it is still a judge a book by its cover side of things as much as you don't want it to be. But there you go. Green Hell launching or relaunching on the first. Next up launching on the first, we have Earthen War. Looks interesting. Definitely different. You are taking the role of a golem during the First World War and going head to head in this two player tactical head to head battler. And they have their own website that you can check out. And it's going to be launching, like I said, on the first two players, 20 minutes, you are going to be using your magic to manipulate the control grid to determine the actions of your golem from behind the front lines to destroy the enemy before they can get you. I don't know too much about the gameplay. Um, I had a chance to interact with the designer on Facebook. He was asking for 
uh, people to look at the game and do videos. So I know there's going to be some content out there. I had a chance to look at the rule book. Um, honestly, I don't remember. And it's going to be interesting to see because you're going to be using these dice that are going to be helping manipulate uh, the grid. So I'm, I'm not sure if it's a little bit of action programming or just a little bit of manipulation in how you're moving and what you're doing. Um, but it definitely, like I said, is a different aesthetic. It's a different appeal. It's a two-player game, though, which, again, is a smaller niche. And, again, is it going to appeal to people? What is the price point going to be, especially if you're going to have figures like this that are that big, which may increase the price point? So it will be really interesting to see from that side what they end up doing. Now, the last one here on this list of this week is I ran across this one on, uh, I think it was Facebook. And this is uh, Anunnaki warrior gods and they said on the advertisement i had it down as september 1st now this is like the website and it says coming soon battle for gold the board game but there's really nothing else there so i'm not sure if this is anything i'm not sure if this is something that you might just see pop up but we'll kind of see so again taking the role of one of the warrior gods to survive on your home planet and combat and just doesn't tell you anything there's not a board game geek entry for the anunnaki and there's not one for battle for gold so i don't know what to tell you but i thought i'd throw it in there just in case okay there you go that is what to expect in the next week or so obviously two that i'm really going to be watching uh let's see uh, your weekly uh, TV thoughts roundup section. So if you like this section, great. If you're not, you can click on the next portion of the timestamp. I watched the animated Witcher film, uh, Nightmare of the Wolf on Netflix. I am not familiar with the source material of the Witcher. Like I know there's books and series and video games and all of that. My first real depth of the witcher was honestly the, the netflix show like i've been familiar with the lore i've been of knowledge of the game and of it in general but i never played the video games and so um you know the, the netflix series was probably a good b plus you know for me in terms of how good it was that song is probably one of my favorite songs you, if you if you remember my cold open of me doing that earlier in the year or actually for my uh, review of the Witcher the board game when it was on Kickstarter uh, but this animation I mean the animation is stellar uh, the fight scenes are really good it's gruesome though it's a little bit too graphic at times frankly speaking uh, especially for a younger audience and it left me feeling now I didn't know this and I, I can't speak to this but it left me feeling like there were gaps in the story if you've ever seen any video or movie that's based on a book like take you know any classic like born or harry potter or anything like that even even heck go with jurassic park the the original jurassic park if you read the book and then watch the movie you realize then truly truly how much a movie leaves out that the book can fully flesh out and after watching this even though i don't have any experience with the as I said, the novel side of things of The Witcher, it left me feeling like that. It was cool. I could connect the dots, but it felt like there were also a lot of dots missing that needed to be more fleshed out that it would have been more appropriate for a series where it felt a little bit rushed at times and it felt a little bit like, oh, we're just going to jump from this to this to this and we're going to make big jumps and bigger jumps. And if you don't pay attention, it, it, it works and it's smooth, but it's definitely not the best thing I've seen either, especially in terms of fleshing certain aspects out without going into spoilers so i mean I, I don't know i didn't know a lot of that mythos in the first place but there were also some leaps of logic that were kind of like come on now really you just wouldn't or you just wouldn't say this or you just wouldn't so it is what it is so take that for what you will i am also finishing the expanse uh season two right now i am just at the end of season two uh i, I found out where i was and i just you know started watching again so great 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 i wish i could get my wife to watch it she doesn't listen to any of my recommendations i recommend stuff to her all the time and then like like six months a year later or like a year later and one of her friends mentions a series and then she watches it and then she's like oh this is really good and i'm like that's why i told you to watch it like a while ago like if you've ever seen i think one of you in the comment section actually mentioned this uh line of duty the british show 
Oh my gosh, I told her about that and then she binged it like two years later because she found it on Hulu and like, oh, I don't have anything else to watch. I guess I'll see what this one is. Oh yeah, you really did like that. You got to trust my recommendations. Uh, and then I'm I'm watching Marvel's What If still. So again, no spoilers, but it's good. Uh, the animation, again, is it's definitely different. It's definitely a big what if. And the big question is, uh, are they going to use what if? I mean, th this was sort of the teaser, I guess. Are they going to use this to jump into other movies or other series? Or is this, like people were sort of initially thinking, going to be sort of the standalone? It's going to stand alone. It's not connected to anything. But is it? Is it going to trickle in? So that'll be the other interesting thing to see. We'll see where it goes. Um, that's it. That's what I'm doing right now. Extracurricular. Uh, we're going to be playing stuff, I think, tonight. I'm going to get a game of uh, maybe some Exceed. I have uh, Rift Force, which was one of the Spiel uh, recommended games, which uh, they sent me. And so I'm really excited to play that one, too, as something different. Uh, and just a couple other things that are new to my collection that I would like to play but won't get played. And again, I'm going to have, hopefully in the next week or so, a video out talking about Eleven, the football manager game that's launching on GameFound next month. So I have a preview copy of that, and I'm excited to get that to the table to play that as well. My five-year-old, who's super obsessed with soccer, uh, football, he calls it soccer, was like, ooh, daddy, can I play that one? And I was like, uh, buddy, I'm not, not quite sure you're going to be able to play this one. But, you know, if you want to sit with me while I, while I play it, you know, you're more than welcome. You know, he's putting his soccer jersey on and... And we're ordering, I'm ordering for his birthday, uh, you know, NBC sports package so we can watch some of the Premier League, at least on demand. So anyway, that's all I got non-board game related. Uh, check out whatever video comes out tomorrow and Monday. There will be stuff. Hopefully it'll be of interest to you. Again, shoot me those questions. Tell me what you want to see video wise. I will tailor it to what people want the most. Like, like I said at the beginning of this channel, how it's got me this far. What do you want to see? Tell me and I will talk about it. There you go. Rambling at the beginning, rambling at the end. You love it. Stay classy. See you around. Have a great day. Do something fun. It's a weekend.